as a capital of culture, which is now this year, 2008, and we would like to see that uh, Islam is revived in this area and that we re-establish the center which was established by, by Abdullah Quillian in, in the 1898s. To celebrate the pioneering work of Sheikh Abdullah, a small group of Liverpool Muslims in 1998 formed the Abdullah Quilliam Society. The Abdullah Quilliam Society aims to raise financial support to refurbish the premises and return it to being a centre of Islamic excellence, as it was 100 years ago, and to take it into the 21st century as the Abdullah Quilliam Heritage Centre. I think the Quilliam Society is a great idea, um, even though I'm not a Muslim myself, but um, to Muslims, local Muslims, which get more and more, um, it must be a great um, society for them to come to and get help and uh, advice. I think it's always important to realise the history behind 8 Brome Terrace and what the Abdullah Quilliam Society want to achieve not only for the Muslim community in Liverpool and the Northwest region, but also to break down the barriers that exist in lots of societies now with intolerance. So I think it's a wonderful way forward to teach the Islamic faith to the people of the city, whatever gender, whatever religion, or whatever race they come from. This is the first mosque that I know of which was truly British and started here. And being a Muslim, it particularly interested me. It was an interesting building also because it's a listed building built in 1830s, something like 175 years ago. And more than 100 years ago, uh, Abdullah Quilliam, when he took over this building, he made an interesting change and brought, it, a new, brought in new features to this building. Uh, as an architect, I'm obviously keen and interested to see how this can be developed further. We actually say, you know, we're working on the first mosque that was in England. And everything has had, shall we say, a full and utter discussion. The mix of the cement had to be what was done in the late 20th century. The stainless steel gutters have got to look like lead. All the pipework has got to look authentic as we can, but with modern materials. And that's the challenge. It is really a great honour and a privilege to be involved um, with the first mosque in England, which was set up by an Englishman on an English soil 120 years ago. So the very involvement is very historic and that is really something uh, 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 very unique to me. First of all, we'd like to restore the first mosque in England as it was 120 years ago and also to have a state-of-the-art and Islamic museum unique again in the European soil and also uh, to use the center for interfaith dialogues and community cohesion. Uh, a place for learning for all communities um, also, we will have an Islamic garden and also a, prayer, a further prayer room as a mosque um, built with the modern design um, and the backyard. Abdullah Quilliam Foundation, established only a few months ago, has a different agenda, a completely different program, whereas we have been established for nearly 10 years and we have been working very quietly to establish a center which will be called Abdullah Quilliam Heritage Centre and that is one of our main objectives. This is an incredibly important project for not just the whole British Muslim community but for the global Muslim community to actually see and have forever, if you like, professionally archived his words, his actions and what, and what he did in this community which was dynamic and vibrant and committed to a British Islam. So that's an Islam which is authentically Islamic and, and, and true to the, to the faith and to the deen also authentically British. I think as we build through the safer, stronger communities and have real community cohesion, it's important that everybody is able to access all community centres like the Abdullah Quillam Society will establish in Brome Terrace. And I think it's important the educational aspect, it's important that it is an office space, a workspace for people to work in. It's important that it's a museum of history so people can see where Abdullah Quillam came from, what he did, and what he actually achieved for all the people of Liverpool as we work towards a very tolerant society. I was really honoured when I was asked to become patron of the Abdullah Quilliam Society. 
and especially the refurbishing of the Islamic prayer room and the turning of it into the Islamic Heritage Centre in Liverpool. Uh, and for two reasons I decided to do it. Firstly, uh, Jesus told us that the, there were two commandments in the end, to love God with all your heart and to love your neighbour as yourself. And uh, if I was to say, well, who is my neighbour, then in Liverpool, the Muslim community is my neighbour. The Muslim community is the neighbour to the Christian community. And how do I show that love for my neighbour? It seemed to me that one of the ways I could do that was to help in the refurbishment of the Abdullah Quilliam Centre. At the moment, we are restoring the roof of the building, which is costing us £150,000. We urgently need that. And also, to, in total, it will cost us around £2.5 million for the full refurbishment. Of course, as far as the fabric of the building is concerned, it's very sound. And perhaps it will take less than a million pounds to restore it, make it habitable. But that is not the idea. It's, we are not going to let out rooms here. We want to establish it as a cultural center, a propagation center, a center of excellence from which we can propagate, from which we can invite people, invite all people, as the Quran says, to the way, invite all to the way of thy Lord, mm -hmm. with beautiful preaching. And the response from the Muslim community I mean, in regards to funding, how have you found... Unfortunately, and it's very sad to reflect, that the Muslim community seems to be in a deep slumber. Nothing seems to excite them. And as I said, this is the only heritage which has been left to us, the only legacy, and we are unable to raise funds to refurbish it. All we need is a bit of money. So we have appealed to the sheikhs in the Middle East. We have appealed to the rich people in this country. But so far, we have had no response. And we are hoping that through this channel that we are working on, and I hope people will feel that it, it is their duty to uphold this heritage that has been left to us, this legacy, and do all they can to help us to raise the necessary funds so that we can restore this place to its former glory and make it again a center of excellence, a center for the propagation of Islam and Islamic ideals. So my plea would be really is to do get involved in this project, do contribute what you can and let's retain our Islamic heritage um, as it should be retained um, uh, for the betterment of, of uh, today and for the future. If we don't uphold our Islamic history today, what can we leave for tomorrow's generation? Abdullah Quilliam's pioneering dawah work in Liverpool and his prolific writings and lectures on Islam became well known, not only in England, but across the world. In fact, we can exclusively reveal that Abdullah Quilliam played a crucial role in introducing Islam to Japan. We came to know the first Japanese Muslim Abdul Halim Noda, who happened in, 19, in 1891, went to Istanbul uh, during the Ottoman period. And there he met Abdullah Gulyam, who was coming to visit uh, Istanbul. And after a dialogue, uh, Noda accepted al Islam and declared his faith in this. And since then, I've become interested also in Abdullah Gulyam, because he, through him, the first Japanese become Muslim, I trust the story of Abdullah bin Yab. I also search for the first American Muslim, okay. Alexander Webb, who was uh, ambassador of U.S. to Philippines and become Muslim. He resigned and he established a Islamic center in New York. And there was a strong relation between Abdullah bin Yab and Alexander Webb. Abdullah Quilliam's legacy lives on and Western Muslims, particularly reverts to Islam, see him as a forefather of the path they have undertaken. He did an awful lot of good for people in Liverpool and people generally in England, you know, and I think that uh, there should be more people like him that are prepared to give themselves to the community and to their country and to whatever, to improve them. And he always wanted to improve things.